Time to roll this engine out and get it assembled. Welcome to Hacker Week. What I'm after anyway with this is to get inside here and verify that everything's okay, that the uh, uh, connecting rod bolts have been replaced with new ones. I gotta call the guy and talk to him about it, plus visually verify that, and just check everything else in here. I'm gonna call up the guy that I bought it from, pick his brains a little bit about what's going on with the training engine, bearings, everything, where he left off with the build of this engine, because that would help me a lot might save me some time but I really want to double check everything make sure it's all right before we go any further before anything gets bolted on up here so it's uh, all about pulling all this back off again and getting down inside there so let's do that and put stuff on a towel this time I agree that cement just is too harsh on aluminum anything so what are we looking at here? This is the crankshaft. These are the connecting rods that go to the pistons in the cylinders, move up and down, turn the crankshaft, move that like so and into here and there we go. Into the uh, primary shaft of the transmission. Right now, if I spin, try to spin the output, this is where the uh, final output drive goes, right on this big gear. If I try to spin that, you can see it's in gear. That's first gear. If I go to there, it's neutral. See, I can spin it freely. And then we go to second, and third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it's all about how these gears mesh with each other and combine to create a ratio that drives all the way through to this final output stage right here. So that's how all that works and the clutch is over here which is a bunch of discs that engage or disengage like this and more or less take this shaft and turn it into two pieces that can move independently if all of these wafers are squished really tight. If they aren't squished all the way really tight then these can move independently of each other so you can have it in gear with all of this stuff spinning but it's not being transferred to the final output drive because in here everything is slipping past each other. That's a quickie explanation of the clutch. So what I'm after now is to verify that all of these connecting rod bolts have been replaced with new ones because they stretch to yield the original ones. Later, uh, you know, aftermarket stuff is available, has been I guess for a while, for bolts that you can reuse but some of these bolts do stretch to a certain point. They stay there, they're under torque that way, and if you try to use them again, they won't stretch the same way. They can loosen up, and losing a rod would really suck because it ruins your otherwise perfectly good engine. I mean, look at this. If I didn't verify that these were really, for real, replacement ones, and they've been torqued properly, what if one comes loose after I do all this work? You know, I'd be crying. So would you. <laughs> so I've got a give the guy a call right now see what's up with that aside from that I want to clean off this surface rust that built up in here this winter not a big deal just want to get it out of there so that when oil gets in it doesn't get in contaminate the oil and then uh, go ahead and start looking for some of these bolts and screws that hold all these pieces together and double check bearings and all that stuff make sure everything's right in there where it's supposed to be and then we can move on to doing the final clamp down. I need to get some uh, sealer for this metal to metal contact. There's a few options. I've been told uh, through some, well, not so much told, but I have read that Honda Bond is the stuff. That's the shit. That's what you want to put the case halves together with. It's worth getting. So I've got to get some of that, I guess. There's no hurry here. We can take our time. You know, there's other things to put together as well. If I'm waiting for parts on one section, I can easily move on to the next section. So we're going to jump around a lot as time goes by with this project. So get used to that. Okay, here's the deal. I just talked to the guy. As it turned out, he did not take any of this apart. 
He left it just like it was. The bike was running when he got it. It was running fine. He just wanted to tear it down, do a nice rebuild, make everything all pretty again and perfect. And that's why he tore it apart as far as he did. But he didn't do anything with the connecting rod and bearings. So it's decision time. Do I just kind of trust it? I can't feel anything significant that way. That doesn't always mean shit, really, but well, you know what? I'm gonna look into what it would take to get new bolts and new uh, bearings. And if I do that route, then we'll go ahead and we'll put plastic gauge on the bearing surface and see just what kind of oil clearance we have left in there. I'm thinking it's gonna be just fine and tight. I could probably put this thing together just like this and it would be fine. No problem at all. I mean, it really feels good. I may just do that. But uh, I don't know, we'll price it out and see how it works out. After about 20 minutes of searching through all the boxes, I finally found the engine hardware. I believe this is the engine hardware. Sure looks like it to me. And it's all replated. And it looks like some of this could be replaced by this kit uh, from Z1. I gotta look this up, number 190. Hmm. Anyway, it looks like uh, if nothing else, all the side covers and stuff like that, it's all Allen head hardware, so it could replace some of the 6mm stuff on the engine. I'll have to look that number up and see. So now the task is uh, figuring out where the hell all of these go. Um, just group them together is a good way to start. Engine, case, bolts, lots and lots of them. Pretty much got them all figured out here on the floor. Just need to figure out where they go now in the engine. Got all the sizes laid out there. I need to count them up, count the holes, and then start fitting them to the holes until I figure it all out. I've got a couple of exploded view drawings that may help. So let's see. It's decision time here with this engine because the guy that owned it before me, as I said, didn't change anything here on the rod bearings. He didn't take them apart. Because these are stretch bolts, they can't be reused. You have to, you know, you gotta buy new ones. So the new ones are about 13 to $15 a piece. <laughs> it's like 120 bucks worth of bolts that you need to get. And uh, everywhere you go searching for them, they show up as obsolete. I found one place that was, uh, the best price I found was eBay, new old stock in Taiwan, $13.99 each. I may end up having to spend that money though. This thing has 28,000 miles on it. That's not a huge amount of mileage, but uh, I don't know if it's ever been worked on or not, or how it was driven. That also makes a big difference, how it was maintained, all that stuff. But the bearing shells here that go on the crankshaft, there's, uh, there's one on each side, there's one down below and on that journal and there's one on the top and this is what they look like. They're just two shells of uh, metal and when they go together they make a circle. So right now in this part of the case are the lower halves and then these are the ones that were taken out that went across the top. Now they aren't numbered, I'm not sure where they went in what order that matters a little bit because they do tend to get a little bit of a wear pattern. It's best to put them back where they were, but I don't see a whole lot of, of uh, really nasty wear on here. Um, there's wear on them, you know, but there is a way we can check these out. And uh, it's this stuff that's called plastic gauge. This is it right here. It's just a little small filament of like a squishy plasticky stuff. Looks like uh, spaghetti but really thin. You put a little piece of it this way across the uh, the bearing, lay it like this perpendicular to it, put it all together, torque it all down, take it back apart and it will squish that little piece of plastic and depending on how wide it squishes to you hold it up to this gauge and you can see what that equals in a distance, a clearance, that's called the oil clearance. All of these type of bearings have an oil clearance built into them. This is where the oil comes in through this little hole. There's a, a oil gallery that runs across here and it all circulates all through here and makes everything all lubed and very happy. So these need to be checked out. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards 
the whole thing of let's just do this right. Even though I could put it back together probably like this, uh, I'm a little reluctant to because I'm just, you know, I'm always preaching like, hey, if there's time to do it, there's time to do it right. So doing it right would mean let's get all new bearings and everything. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna put one of these in the top half, put a piece of plastic gauge in, clamp it together quick, bolt it up, take it apart, and just get an idea of how much wear has occurred on this engine. There's the little filament of plastic gauge. You can see it's pretty tiny. Put that on here carefully. I'm gonna be a little careful to make sure it doesn't get bumped and knocked off from there. A little tricky to get it to stay. You want to do this on a dry bearing too, by the way, to get an accurate reading. Okay, let's get this case half on. I've got the other side of that bearing shell stuck in the top half of the case here. Flip everything over, put it back together. This is the tricky part, is getting all of these con rods to cooperate with you and pop up through the holes. Of this engine stand that this guy gave me with it is that I can pivot everything on it like so. It's got to keep some weight here, but I can get at the bottom of the engine. Now I'm just going to do a rough torque estimate here. I should be doing this with a torque wrench, but guess what? I left that at work. That's probably about. 18, 18 or 20 foot pounds, that's plenty. Okay, let's take it back apart. All that matters is that we just get a good crush on the uh, bearings so that the plastic age goes squish. So right there, that little uh, blotch that you see, that's the plastic gauge all squished. It's squished out and we need to put this gauge up next to it and find the corresponding width that uh, matches up or at least something close and of course the wider it gets that means the less gap there is between the crankshaft and the bearing so this one uh, if I had to guess I'd say it's probably like 0 0.050 or 0 0.049, something like that. Now let me check the book and see what the maximum wear limit is. There it is. Standard clearance is 0 0.02 through 0 0.046 millimeters. And um, like I said, I'm guessing that I'm probably somewhere around... pushing 0.46 I think When you do this plastic gauge thing, you got to be careful you don't squish it when you're taking it apart any extra than it was. Okay, I can see where it's squished there. It's just a little bit. It stayed on the crankshaft more than it did on the bearing. There it is. It's just a quick eyeball. It pretty much looks about the same to me as the other spot. 
So, yep. Looks like we're gonna get bearings. Well then, in store for a little bit more than I thought, but that's okay. I'll end up with an engine that's completely rebuilt. So there's a few different ways I can go. I can buy the crank bearings and the rod end bearings and just the bolts. Probably spend about 300 bucks, I'm guessing, on that. I could also just go with whole new uh, connecting rod assemblies that come with their own bolts um, and maybe be able to do that for not too much more than just the cost of these bolts. These bolts are considered obsolete. When I go looking on all of the places where I can find Honda parts, look up this part number, it just simply says obsolete and they don't carry it. I can find some on eBay, like I mentioned, $13.99 out of Taiwan. They don't look the same as these though. That's always the sketchy part. So I may end up just going with new rods. We'll see how that works out. I gotta do some shopping around. I was also thinking about the transmission. Should I do anything in here with the uh, ball bearings? But I think I can let those go. There's, uh, there's cars with bearings not much bigger than this in their transmissions and they last for 200,000 miles. So I think I'm pretty good to go on everything in the tranny. The shift forks look good. The, the play going on between the gears is very, very minimal. The cam for the shifter is in great shape. Everything in there seems to be working just fine. I think I'll just leave it alone. Primary chain's not that bad. It's got another tensioner going on to it, new rollers there. The timing chain is new, so that's all good to go. So I think that's, uh, that's what we gotta do is get some parts before we can keep going on the engine. There's lots of other things to do in the meantime though. Um, I've got wheels I can start to true, so maybe next week we'll get on that. Uh, they're hanging up here and they're just all loose right now. So the spokes need to be tensioned, they need to be set in wherever they need to be set. I need to look that up. I gotta find out what the offset is, if any, from the center of the hub, all that stuff. So there will be a bit involved with that. We can move on to that. In the meantime, I gotta save up my pennies and go do some shopping. So I guess if you're gonna donate on this project, now's a good time. Help out on uh, acquiring some engine parts. But uh, I think, that we are done for this week. Thanks for watching and till next time.